third straight year, Coach Moriarty has led his team to undefeated for the first four games. He's looking to make it 5-0 and here in 2023. And I 100% think he can. We've seen what uh, Coach Moriarty has done over these years in... Give me one sec. I believe his seventh season. Yes, yeah, his, seventh, his season. seventh season. He's 45 and 24. Um, and over the last few years, he's just been excellent coach. The entire coaching staff has just done excellent to help lead the players uh, to victory. Mm -hmm. But yeah, getting your point about what I expect, McCartney, you know, I kind of expect, you know, a little bit of both, you know, some defensive action, you know, some offensive action. I really expect a really tight, close game here today where you're really going to see Tao from both sides of the ball to show off here here tonight. Yeah, definitely. And let I mean, I want to talk a little bit about CMA here. They've got players from all over the country. Yeah, they are a private school. They have been private for a while. Yeah, they have some very solid players. And, again, it's it's the schedule that they play. I feel like they have a very solid schedule. And, they and again, they haven't been nearly as, you know, dominant as they have been for the past, you know, few years. But they it's still CMA. That, it's CMA is still – you look at them and they're like, oh, my gosh, we have a good, very good game and we know we're in for a challenge no, no matter what. Hear the name, bam, they're on their schedule. Same thing goes, you know, for Penn, per se. You hear Penn, bam, you know, in college, Notre Dame, Alabama. You hear those names. Even if Notre Dame's not good, they, they're they like, all right, we're playing Notre Dame. This is going to we're gonna be on TV. In the NFL, the Cowboys, you know, Giants, all those teams. CMA is that kind of team. They're like, okay, we're playing CMA. This is going to be a good game for us. Yeah, I mean, exactly. CMA, I mean, this could be... A trap game, definitely, but you know, absolutely, this could 100% be a trap game. But CMA being two and two, and Valley being four and zero, oh, just based off of record, Valley does have the edge here. Um, but yeah, just uh, excited to see some good competition here. Absolutely, and you're right about that, McCartney. I am, I am ready for this four to ninth game. And now, your 2023 Death Valley Wrecking Crew. Starting a linebacker, number 43, Junior Brock Dirk. Starting a linebacker, senior, number 88, Landon Durkis. I also want to talk about Landon Durkis here, McCartney. Landon Durkis has been severely underrated on this team. He's been playing great on defense, but the receiving game is where I'm really interested in. He does great receiving, running those vertical routes, you know. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Drew. I mean, Landon Durkis, he's a tall, physical tight end coming in at a 6'4", 265, and that's just a massive tight end. And he's a tight end that has sneaky speed. If he gets an open field, he could be gone. Black. Yeah, absolutely. And you got to, as long as Cody Eastgate finds you wide open, he's going to throw that ball to you. He's been improving from last year. Definitely. Starting at strong safety, senior number four, Nate Parker. And here comes the man of the hour, Wade Jones. Number 29, Wade Jones. I mean, what is there to say about Wade Jones, McCartney? What can't be said, I mean, he's done everything he can on the field. He does everything off the field. He's just an excellent player, an excellent person. And when you want a leader on your team, Wade Jones is definitely the type of guy to Absolutely. be a team leader. 100%. He is a great leader that any team would want on their team. So it looks like Valley's kicking off here in the first half. Gage Overby, their starting kicker, only a sophomore, and is already, I believe, leading the 
leading the whole HSA and kicks May. This is a very special player here. Uh, you're absolutely right. I mean, he can, we saw last week, he can kick to the end zone and through the end zone. Absolutely. It's not something you normally see in high school kickers. And uh, here we go. Kicks is on his way. And he's going to get knocked down. Taken down by Wade Jones. Or, no, I'm sorry. Taken down by Nate Inkstrand. I saw the two and immediately was like, that's Wade. <laughs> And we are ready to go here. The Eagles will take over at the 38 yard line. First and 10. And again, and again we're going to see this Culver Academy offense. We're going to see how very good they are here. Let's see how they handle this Nefali Wrecking Crew here. Yes, yeah, it's the first time we've seen CMA since 2020. Uh, so we don't know if they've changed their schemes um, or not, but uh, they're in single back formation, man in motion. And, and that was number three, Kyle Egg Brayton. And sorry, see my fans, if we uh, get some of these names wrong, but that was a gain of five there. And that will bring up second down. Yeah, you saw a little bit of misdirection there from uh, <clears throat> from um, from CMA there. Here's the handoff, and he's going to look. He's going to get dropped immediately there. Albert on the tackle, and I believe it's going to be a loss, and it will bring up fur down. That was an absolutely crushing hit there by Dalton Albert. I mean, he just wasn't, Cartmel just wasn't expecting it. Yeah. And we have fur down and six here for Culver Academy. And here's three receivers down at the top of your screen. Two receivers down at the bottom of your screen. Fur down and six. He's gonna have, he's gonna look and it's complete. And it's gonna be close to that first down marker. I believe it's gonna be fourth down and maybe one. And that was Sullivan on the tackle. Excuse me, on the catch. <laughs> that will bring up fourth and one. And now CMA is gonna have to punt here. And yeah. I believe Tay Rodriguez here, I believe that's his name. He's going to be punting the ball here. And it's a high snap. And is able to just get it off. And I believe they'll let it bounce. And I believe that was touchdown at the 12 yard, 12 or 13 yard line. Yeah, it's 12 or 13 yard line. And that will be first down for Tippy Valley. First and ten for Tippy Valley. And again, the leader of his offense, Cody Yiske. He has played better than last year, showing a lot of great improvement. 100%. I mean, as a team that is a run-first offense, when we do pass, they are crisp, clean passes that Yiske is able to make, under pressure or not. So here we go. Two receivers down at the bottom of your screen. Yeah, Parker right behind him. He's going to hand off over to Parker, and Parker's going to get through a couple tackles, and, and that will bring up second down for Tippy Valley. Now it will be a, around a gain of five. So again, another solid carry for uh, Parker there. Yeah, he's just adding to his stats a five-yard carry there on first down. Um, yeah, I mean, Nate, he's just excellent. I mean, I can't say that enough. Durkis in motion. Durkis in motion here. Second down and five. He's going to hand it off over to Parker again. Parker trying to get through, and I don't think he's going to be there. I think he's going to get a couple yards there. Now bring a third down for Tippy Valley. I believe he is th they are three yards shy of a first down here. Do you think they're going to hand it off? or? Uh, they'll pass. They'll pass. Dump, do you think they might do a dump off to a tight end here? Nah, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, they could find if they could find Landon John, Landon Johnson, Land Landon Durkis. Okay, 
Here we go. Fur down and free for Tippy Valley. Shotgun here for Iske. And handoff over to Parker. Parker. I don't I don't think he's gonna get there, and I believe I'll bring up fourth down and very short for Tippy Valley. I believe Valley's gonna go for it here. No, they're gonna go with the uh, nope. punting game here now. If I were CMA, I would watch for the fake punt. If I were CMA, I would watch for the fake punt. Fourth and one, fourth and very short. I, short, excuse me. I would, <laughs> I would look, watch out for the fake punt here. Yeah, you don't see a fake punt very often, but it could very well happen. And here we go, punt. Over to Wade Jones, and there's the punt. Very solid punt. Here's Solomon on the carry. He's going to get brought down immediately. And that was, that was McGriff on the tackle. And now CMA will take over first down and 10 at the 49-yard line. Now, from the first drive of CMA, we saw... I believe one handoff and then a few dump passes that just didn't get anything, or a couple of handoffs and a dump pass that just didn't really get anything going for them. Do you think they continue with that uh, going forward? I don't know. We'll see what happens here. First down and 10. It's going to throw a screen pass, and it's only going to get maybe one, maybe two. Now we're we'll bringing up second down. Actually, no. Actually, yeah, second down and nine here for Tippy Valley for uh, CMA. And again, that was a very solid tackle from Tippy Valley. You're 100% right. They were able to read that, and it's going to be a handoff there to Kyle Legbratton. And yeah, there was got yeah, Kyle Legbratton on the tackle. Very on the, on the carry, Drew. On the carry, I, I said carry, didn't I? You said tackle. That's right, I did. <laughs> Ferdin. It's going to be third down and 10 for CMA. Third down and eight. So, so third down for CMA. Back to passing. Looks, looks and it is intercepted. By Wade Jones. What an interception there by Wade Jones. Able Great. to stick with the receiver the whole route and read the play. Beautiful interception there. So it'll be first down and 10 at the 26 yard line here. So first and ten for Tibby Valley. Receiver at the top of your screen. Running back right next to Cody Iske. Iske flips it off, and he's going to run. He's got room. He's got more room. Is he gone? At the five. Touchdown, Tibby Valley. Grady Moriarty. Grady Moriarty. I would imagine Coach Moriarty's having a smile right on the sideline there. What a play from Grady Moriarty. That's such a beautiful pitch play. And just Grady Moriarty using that strength he has to break off a few tacklers and just jet down the sideline. No one in sight. And what an excellent run there. Great, great blocking, too. And the extra point is no good. So we will be right back on RTC TV4 and the IHSA Champions Network. And we're back on RTC TV4 and the IHSAA Champions Network. And that was an exciting play from uh, two exciting plays, by the way. Wait, starting off with Wade Jones with the interception and then Grady Moriarty with that beautiful run. 74 yards, I believe, on that carry. And that was great running there from Moriarty. I mean, just... Beautiful execution there, and Overby with the kick. Overby's going to kick it off here. And it's going to be a touchback for Gage Overby. Andrew Thompson along with Courtney Reich here. Uh, 
First and ten for the Eagles. And let's see. And again, when you're when you're a quarterback, right? I mean, I play quarterback, and there's a bunch of valid quarterbacks here who play here. And I can tell you, if you throw an interception, just don't even worry about it. Worry about the next play. And if you're CMA, you you got to forget about the, the uh, interception there. Absolutely right there, Drew. And it looks like they're in a single back. A single back formation here for Culver Academy. First and ten. And he hands the ball off, and he's not going to get much here. Maybe a yard or two. And we'll bring up second down here for CMA. And I was Moriarty there on that tackle. Only a three-yard carry there for CMA. And once again, they're back in that single back formation with Egg Bratton in the backfield. Second down and seven for, for Culver Academy. And he's going to throw it here, and he's going to throw it, and it's complete, and he's going to get stomped immediately from the Valley Secondary. He ain't going to get that much yardage there, and that will bring a third down for for uh, CMA. No, he, got, he gained about five there. They gave him forward progress. Yes, he, he got that forward progress. I didn't know if the refs would give him forward progress there. I know. I mean, it was almost instantaneous. As soon as he caught it, he was hit. But uh, I guess it was enough for that forward progress. Bringing up a third and ten, third and two. It's third and two. Now you're messing up, McCarty. Goodness. <laughs> third and two for CMA. And he's going to get there. He's going to toss it. And that is going to be tackle. And I think that might be enough for that first down. A little trickery there from CMA. That play call is effective for a first down. Yeah, and you might see that from CMA. You might see plays that are going to confuse Valley a bit. So first and ten here for, for CMA. There's running back goes to the other side. He's going to throw, throw it. He's going to look deep, and it is caught. Nate as he, and he's going to be down and. And that was a busted coverage there immediately. And that was Aiden Throw on the on the reception, and it's going to bring a first and goal for CMA. And that was a play that CMA needed. That was definitely a play they needed. I mean, it was a great effort by Nate Parker able to bring him down just one yard shy of the end zone, but just busted coverage there by Valley. So first and goal here for CMA. They're all the way down to the one yard. One. He's going to hand it off over to Ray Bragan. That's a touchdown, CMA. That was... You talk about a response, McCartney. That is exactly what CMA needed there for a response. Definitely. I mean, just a quick drive uh, with the long pass and then the short run to the end zone. Not something I think Valley expected there. Oh, no. Definitely not here. Now, that is Polo Thompson. His last name is going to be easy for me to say. Polo Thompson... <laughs> Actually, no, check that. Not Paul Thompson. Teddy Foster is the kicker. And the kick is up. And is that good? And it is. Yes, it is. It is good for Culver Academy. They take the lead. And again, McCartney, that was a quick strike from CMA there after the the interception we talked about you know the interception about how go back to the next play they definitely responded McCartney they definitely did that quarterback's head was clear after that one mistake he made um but yeah I mean now CMA has the lead which is not something we see often I think that's the first time an opposing team has led over Tippy Valley and there's the kickoff here and he's got a run here and I believe that's West Parker on the carry He's going to get through. Wes Parker. He's going to get past midfield. And that was Teddy Foster, the kicker there, able to get Wes Parker out of bounds. And that will bring a first down and 10 for Tippy Valley. And that was a good kickoff from Tippy Valley, considering the kickoff there. That was a great return there by Wes Parker, able to field it uh, pretty cleanly and then just take it up the field and take it to the 44-yard line. <laughs> Are you expecting another one-play drive here? I don't know about that, but 
We'll see here. First and 10 for Tippy Valley at the 44 yard line here. And he's going to hand it off over to Nate Parker. All the block in here, and he's got to get through a couple tackles. Gain of about five, maybe six yards there from Nate Parker. And I'll bring up second down for Tippy Valley. That's a good five yard carry there. Yeah, here. And Kyler Johnson, I believe. Yes, Kyler Johnson's going to come in for Durkis here on his play. Maybe extra blocking here. Here for uh, Tippy Valley here. So second down and four at the at midfield now for Tippy Valley. Eastgate on her center. It's going to play fake here, and it is incomplete. Just over Kyler Johnson's fingertips. Kyler and now will bring up fur down. Sorry, McCartney. Kyler Johnson is a pretty big tight end there. 6'6", 230. I mean, he's a huge target to have. and just He was rushed by two CMA linemen there, so pass was a little bit rushed, but um, nothing against Cody there. Just It was excellent defense. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you overthrow a receiver for a lot of times when you're quarterback. Third down and four here. Eastgate under center. He's going to toss it up over to Nate Parker. Nate Parker gets through. He's going to gain the first down. Gain of about five, maybe six. But that is just enough for Nate Parker for the first down. The vision he has for the field is immaculate. Mm -hmm. It is absolutely absurd how well, oh, excuse me, how well Nate Parker is able to read the defense and make cuts that are needed to pick up those extra few yards. So, so first down and ten. Seaver down the bottom of your screen. Eastgate's going to be under center here. He's going to hand the ball yes, off sir. here. He's going to get through, and he's got a first down and more down at around the 30 yard line. And now I'll bring up another first down for Tippy Valley. Sullivan on a tackle. Trent Marshall able to pick up that first down there, coming in at six foot 175. And. Culver here is going to take their first time out of the half with 3.40 left in the first quarter. And we'll take a timeout too as well. We'll be right back on RTC TV4 and the IHSAA Champions Network. And we're back on RTC TV4 and the IHSAA Champions Network. Andrew Thompson, Loma McCartney, right? And, uh, and as far as Irving goes here in his first quarter, very competitive game here. 100% Drew. I mean, it's 7-6 CMA, but Valley's driving down the field here with little... Under four minutes left in this first quarter. Eastgate. Eastgate again under center here. Marshall in motion, and he's going to fake. He's going to hand off over to Brock Durf, and Brock Durf has more yardage. And I will bring up another first down. And that was Sullivan again in that corner for CMA, able to get another tackle there. And there is a flag on the play. We'll check the flag. Holding on the Vikings. Ooh, that will be a holding on the Vikings. That's something you don't want to see. I mean, that was such an excellent play, and then just have it ruined by that holding call. Valley will definitely bounce back, though, as Kyler Johnson comes in for Landon Durkis. Durkis taking a little breather here on first and 20 after that solid run from Durf. So I believe the I formation here for Eastgate. And here it is. And there's Parker here. A little hesitation. Not much. He's able to just get at least a yard, maybe two. And I'll bring him second down. You saw a little hesitation there on Parker. Uh, I mean, I don't know if that was exactly a hesitation for Parker. I think Cody Eastgate looked to the wrong side and handed it off. And that could have been what caused a little bit of a disruption there. Yeah, yeah, definitely there. So leave Turkish back in. Here comes second down and 17 for Tippy Valley, down by one in the first quarter. And he's going to fake it, and here's Eastgate, and he's going to get pressured, and he's going to be brought down here for a sack, and that's going to make things even more harder for the Valley offense here. And that was Job, Job Maverick, number 74. And now we'll bring a third and very long for Tippy Valley. 
after what looked like an excellent start to the drive is shaping up to be a, a stalling drive here for Vi for the Vikings. Absolutely. And then... And now we have third and 24 here. And Eastgate again in her center. And here's Eastgate. He's going to look and nobody's even going to block from the, for number 17, Nick Fumik. And that is back-to-back -back sacks. And the Valley, Valley special teams will come out here. And that was that that was just missed blocking there. You could tell from the very beginning. Yeah, I mean uh, seventeen got there got to him almost instantaneously. And uh, now it's fourth down and thirty five. And and there is a solid punt there from Wade Jones. And he's gonna get a return here. And boom! What a hit there. And that was he didn't throw on the return and got delayed out on that play. That will bring a first down for CMA. And that was just an excellent uh, punt there and an excellent hit to stop uh, almost instantly after he got the punt return. That was a solid hit there from Wyatt Hart. So first down and 10 here for CMA. See you may in the single back formation here. So 50, 55 seconds left here to go in the first quarter. And number four in motion here. He's going to get the carry. Little jet sweep. And he won't get much. Maybe a loss on that play. That was Rory Sullivan on the carry. And that will break up second down and 11 for CMA. Excellent ability for Valley's defense there to read the read the play there and just able to make the stop almost instantly. And and unless we get an incomplete pass here, this will most likely be the last play of the first quarter. And here we go. He's gonna get a blitz, and he just missed first, and now he gets there. My goodness, what a way to end to end the first quarter here. That was Dorp on the sack. And and that is that will be the end of the first quarter here. We'll be right back on RTC TV4 and the IHSAA Champions Network. And we're back here on RTC TV4 and the IHSAA Champions Network. And Drew Thompson along with McCartney Wright and um and I Fort Tippy Valley. And again, it was a one play driver for Valley, and ever since then, not much on offense, McCartney. Yeah, I mean you're correct there. I mean Culver Academy is just able to uh able to make some stops there. Uh that last drive for Valley just was not productive at all. Uh two back to back sacks and a penalty on that drive. And now Culver Academy Lining up in the single back formation. Third and 16 for, for Culver Academy. He's going to look. He's going to throw. Sullivan's going to get knocked down. And that was a completed pass. That was an 18 yard gain, and that will bring up a first down for CMA. And Michael McCogan there able to elude the uh, wrecking crew and just keep the play alive for the first down. And McCartney, I think that's going to be a big change of momentum for CMA. Get that big play in. Yep. So first and 10 for CMA. And Sullivan for the sweep. He's going to fake it. He's going to Throw it, and that's a dot immediately throwing. That's going to bring up a first down for CMA. That was just a beautiful pass there. It was an excellent pass there by McCooligan. Uh, and an excellent tackle there by Nate Parker. But unfortunately, they did get enough for that first down. Absolutely. 
And McCole, not, again, he's been playing. He threw down one interception. Ever since then, solid as a quarterback. Ever since then, he's been throwing lasers after that one interception. And he's got to throw a pressure, and it is, again, a completion there from McGolgan. And despite the pressure, he still was able to just get it off. And that will bring up another first down. Yeah. Another first down for CMA. CMA is driving down the field here. Uh, I don't think Valley expected this to be such a close and defensive battle uh, as CMA is driving down uh, the field. So first and ten here for CMA. Yeah, there we go. And he's gonna look. He's gonna have pressure all over, and he's gonna get brought down. McGriff on the sack, and it will bring up second and long, and that is what the, rec the Valley Wrecking Crew needed there on defense. Yeah, and if they can hold him here, that might force CMA to punt. I mean, I almost feel like they would have to. I don't know how good their kicker's leg is, but um, it would go from about the 42. He'd probably be kicking from 53, 54. So again, second down and 16 for CMA. Michael McColgan here. Running back right next to him. Able to another fake, and he's gonna look. He's gonna throw it, and it is incomplete. Almost a caught for a second, but just able to get through his hands. Porker on the coverage, and I'll bring a third down and 16 for CMA. And McCoolgan, he's got some pretty good speed, able to run to the outside and scramble out, and even just make that throw was impressive, even if it wasn't complete. But if you looked at that last play, there was about five Vikings right all, on his tail. Oh, exactly, all over the field. Third down and 16 for CMA. And he's going to look and throw it at incomplete. He was in, intended for Rory Sullivan, and I'll bring it fourth down for CMA. And now it's fourth down at 16 for CMA. And I, they looks like they're going to punt it here. Yeah, they're going to punt it out for punt it here for CMA. Yeah, would look like a promising drive for a CMA. And now Valley will receive the punt again. And punt away. And it looks like he's going to be able to take just a bounce. Out of bounds. And oh, that punt will be at around the 11 yard line here. And here comes Cody Eastgate and this Vikings offense. What do you think they need here to... They, they need a big play. they they, they got to get a very solid drive here. Get themselves back on their feet, McCartney. I mean, they at least they need at least a field goal in this drive. But let's see what they do to start this drive off. So first and ten for Tippy Valley. <laughs> and Eastgate again on her center. He's going to throw, get on over to yeah. Nate Parker. He's going to throw it deep, and it is wide open. Wade Jones, is he gone to 30, 25, 10, 5. Touchdown, Tippy Valley. What a throw from Nate Parker. What can, what can he not do, McCartney? Well, is there anything? My goodness. There is nothing he cannot do. He became a quarterback, and that was just a beautiful high arcing throw to Wade Jones for the touchdown. And Wade Jones, there, that was great running there from Wade Jones. Wide open, was able to just evade a tackler there. Great run there. My goodness. That was the spark that Valley needed as Overby, I believe, comes in for the extra point, unless they're going to go for two to try and make it 14-7. And it looks like 
Foul is going to go for two here, and that's what this is what Coach Royarty likes to do here. Have Porque, and he's going to pitch it off. And it's going to be a two point conversion here for Tippy Val. And that was a creative play call there. We'll be right back here on RTC TV4 and the IHSA Champions Network. And we're back on RTC TV4 and the IHSA Champions Network. Andrew Thompson, the love of McCartney, right now. What, what a play call there from from uh, Coach Moriarty there. That was an excellent play call. I mean, and, and the offensive coordinator, Coach Weaver, there. What a great play call there. Excellent play. I mean, it stunned everybody. It, it just confused CMA. I thought Nate was going to get tackled for a loss there, but he found Wade Jones open in the middle of the field. And he just took it to the house. And Overby's going to kick it off, and that is a beautiful kick there and Sullivan's going to return it and that was a solid coverage from the Valley special teams there and now that will bring up first down for CMA and with 9.28 left in this first half what do you think CMA is going to need to do to uh, put this game even closer oh they well first of all they got to score here. I mean well not score here even if you don't score here you, you got to adjust the defense for our Colfer Academy because now you got to watch out for those trick plays here. But we'll see what happens here. What do you think, McCartney? Well, I'm expecting them to line up in that single back formation they've been loving to use um, this game. And maybe a man in motion. They've tried that a few times. As there's three out wide and a single back. So f first down and 10 here for CMA's. Going to hand the ball off here. Very decent run here. Is able to get stomped out. And that will bring up second down for CMA. And note the two safeties were able to just get in there on a tackle here for a second down and five. Yeah, I mean, this is the formation they love to use, the single back formation. And now they've got three out wide again. Let's see what happens here. And here we go, hand off, goes, and he's going to get maybe a couple yards there. And Nick Brun on the carry, and I'll bring up third down for CMA, and that was third from the tackle. They're down in four, and that play just didn't work out for him, I believe. It was a halfback draw, um, or halfback inside, I don't know. Um, but I think he just got tripped up there by Valley Defenders trying to lunge forward. Eight fifty left to go here in the second quarter. Here, the Colgan will get it. He's got to try to run here, and he's got to get stuff immediately after a, a miss tackle there. He was just able to get there. Mason on the tackle, and I'll bring a fourth down for for CMA. And from our angle up here in the press box, Drew, that looked like a low snap, but even perhaps a, almost a fumble there. Absolutely. Um, which is a good thing for Valley as their punter is out there to boot it away to Nate Parker. Nate Park, Parker back to, back to receive. Just a little over 8-10 left to go here in the first half. And he is able to just get the kickoff. Almost blocked. And I believe they're just going to let it bounce. And that's where Tippy Valley will start off here. First down and 10. Not bad starting field position for the Valley Vikings here. And the ball is going to be placed at a 23-yard line. <clears throat> so, bring up first and 10 for Tippy Valley. Score 14-7. to seven. What do you think uh, Coach Weaver and Moriarty are going to draw up here? I'm thinking just, again, just, you know, I think in this time, not a lot of trickery here. They're just going to, you know, go take as much field time as possible to get the, uh, get more yardage. What do you think, McCartney? I mean, you're 100% right. There's less than eight, a little under eight minutes in the half. So I think what they're going to try and do is kind of bleed the clock here. Yeah, it looks like there's just under 10 seconds left to go on the play clock. And they're going to hand it off over to Nate Parker. And Parker, and he's going to get stumped immediately. 
believe, behind the line of scrimmage, and it's going to bring up second down. That play call had no chance there, especially with the amount of time they wasted off the play clock for Carney. Yeah, I mean, had to get that snap off right away, and I don't think they got anything. It's just second and ten. Um, it looked like they were a little bit confused on the play call as many substitutions are coming in. So second out and ten for Tippy Valley. And it's going to be a timeout for Tippy Valley. And we will be right back on RTC TV4 and the IHSAA Champions Network. And we're back on RTC TV4 and the IHSAA Champions Network. Andrew Thompson along with McCartney Wright. Uh, they got 14 7 Tippy Valley here in the first half. Homecoming night here for Tippy Valley. And let's see what they can draw up here as their first play was rushed and it didn't get anything for them. So, second and 10 for Tippy Valley. So second and ten. Receiver at the top of your screen and at the bottom of your screen here. He's going to pitch it off and he's going to get it over to Trent Marshall. Actually, no, Grady Moriarty on the carry. That will bring a gain of six. That will bring a third down for, for Tippy Valley. Landon Durkis comes in for Kyler Johnson, and it makes it a much, after that six yard carry, it makes it a much more manageable third down and four. And yeah, like you said, it was more manageable third down and four for Tippy Valley. So under center here, Iske, he's got to get, and he's got to fumble the ball here. He's going to run with it. Parker was just able to get it. And it's going to bring a fourth down for Tippy Valley. And that was not a good, that was just not a disaster on third down for Tippy Valley. I mean, that could have been way worse. But Parker was able to have the wherewithal to get his own fumble there. Uh, and he picked up, I believe, a yard, if maybe. If lost, any. If any. But uh, I'd rather be fourth down and three than give CMA possession back at the uh, 28 if they were to recover that. And here is Jones' punt, and that is a high punt. And it will be a solid bounce here. And now we'll bring up first and ten for CMA. First and ten for the Eagles. And a ball will be placed at the 43-yard line. And this has just been a strong defensive battle here. I mean, we've had a couple big plays for both teams, but other than that, not really getting a any able to get anything going here. So first and ten here for CMA. <laughs> he's got to throw it, and it's going to be incomplete. He... Dirk is able to get the pressure there on McCoolgan to uh, alter the ball flight there. Tender receiver is Aiden Fro, the senior receiver for Culver Academy. And that was great pressure there from Durkis there, McCartney. Yeah, he was able to get in from his linebacker position right as that ball was snapped. And single back formation here for Culver Academy. Six, second out and ten here, six minutes left to go. He's got a throw. And he's gonna gonna able to get there. McColgan pushed out of bounds, gets a few yardage there, and I'll bring up third down here for CMA. That was great press uh, coverage there from from Tippy Valley. I mean that was excellent pressure, great coverage. Not McColgan not able to find a receiver downfield, decided to take it and run it for about five yards, which makes it third down and five for Culver Military. And let's hope that the Valley Vikings defense can stop him here and force another punt. With third and Third and five for CMA, 48-yard line here. And here's a pressure. He's able to dump it off and able to get to get a tackle from behind. Kyle Eggbron there on the 
on the receiving end, and that'll bring up first down for CMA. And they were just able to fool the Valley Vikings defense there, able to draw them in and do that little screen pass there to their running back for the first down. That was a blitz, and you could tell that was a blitz right there, McCartney. So first and 10 from the 46-yard line here. 5.25 left to go here in the first half. He's going to throw, and it's going to be over to throw, and it's going to be tackled down by tackled from Nate Parker and other Valley defenders on the tackle there on throw. And I'll bring up a, first, a second down for CMA. And Valley's defense just needs a big stop here. Needs to maybe push him back in another sack. <laughs> just make a field goal a lot harder to get if they can't score a touchdown here. So second and four for CMA. He's going to throw, and it's going to be a completion. And he's going to turn, and he's going to get into the end zone for the Cooper Academy touchdown. That was perfect catch and perfect running there from CMA. All right, as Culver's able to put some points on the board here and now make it a 14-13 situation with just under five left in the half. Maybe we'll go to halftime with the tie game here, which this is, a, this, this is just good football. This is what you want to see in a football game. Now the extra point about to come up. Extra point up, and it is good. Well, we're going to need a break here, McCartney. We'll be right back on RTC TV4 and the I just say, hey, Champions Network. And we're back on RTC TV4 and the I just say, hey, Champions Network. Game time at 14. We got a good game, McCartney. A good game here at Smith Fibble Memorial Field. Yes, we do, Drew. I mean, it's 14 14, and we haven't seen a tie going into half, I believe, all season, unless the first game happened, unless it was the. Uh... Wawa C game. Yeah, I wasn't. I didn't go watch that one. I wish I did. And now Culver Academy. <laughs> able to kick it off here. And he's able to get it over to Wes Parker. Wes Parker here on a return. Wes Parker down to the 40. And I believe just at the 45-yard line here. And I will bring a first and 10 here for Tippy Valley. Good return there from Parker. That was an excellent return there, putting it within a manageable situation here for Valley to just get a few first downs and at least get a field goal heading into half. So first and 10 here for Tippy Valley, down to the 43-yard line, excuse me there. And we got to see what Coach Moriarty and the Vikings are going to draw up here. First and 10 here, Eastgate under center. And he's going to hand it off, and it's going to be a fumble. Is, is he down? And I think they called him down on the fumble, and that was almost disaster there for Tippy Valley. Yeah, I mean, you can see Culver Military Academy. Uh, their head coach is frustrated, but even if it was a fumble, Valley did come up with the recovery there. Okay, Valley is able to get up on the recovery. And if you're Valley, you never want to get a fumble there, McCartney. So Eastgate under center. He's Eastgate's gonna pass. He's gonna run. He's gonna under pressure. It's going to be incomplete. Now we'll bring a fur down for Tippy Valley. And there's a flag on the play. I believe they're going to get it for a chop block. A flag on the play. Uh, could that be roughing the passer, McCartney? Well, I saw the, uh, the first flag was thrown when uh, Eastgate was almost taken down, but then there was a chop block there, and then as Eastgate threw it away, it was going out of bounds. He was taken down by a Culver Military Academy defender. Could an offset here? Uh, I believe it could definitely be an offset. Two penalties do equal an offset, unless there's a trump penalty. 
Trump penalty. This is a political free zone, McCartney. Jeez. <laughs> I didn't mean it like that, Drew. You come on now. I think the penalties will offset here. So chop block. So it's going to be a. Chop block on So it's going to be a chop block on the Vikings. And a. Intentional grounding on Tippy Valley. Who got to intentional grounding? Big, big call. He, I don't understand. I mean, there yeah, should have been a penalty there for the eagle or from the Eagles. He was going out of bounds and he was man, taken he down. was out of the he was out of the tackle box. It wasn't like he was in, you know. He was take he was out of the field of play when he threw it. Exactly. I don't know. Second and twenty. Second and long for Tippy Valley. And are the officials going, they're going to go with this. Lost a down on the play, third and long for the Vikings. So now it's going to be third and long. And I think the Colbert Academy coach was arguing that. Pull. Oh and he's going to throw it a big blitz, and it's going to be intercepted. Intercepted by number 55. Henry Martello, the defensive lineman, and that was that was a disaster from Tippy Valley there. Yeah, I mean the Eagles were able to just blow past their offensive line, and uh, I don't know what's happening, but this is not the type of game you do you expect to see from the Vikings. Um, uh, no, that especially not. Nah. I mean, Eastgate had defenders in his face. He just tried to get rid of the ball, I think, and. Uh, there was just one lucky eagle there to pick it off. First and ten for a Tippy Val for a CMA. The Valley defense got to make a stop here. First and ten for CMA. McColgan, he's got time to pass. He's gonna throw it, and it's gonna be complete. Jones was able to stop it. Touchdown, CMA. One play, one interception from CMA. One play, one touchdown. For CMA, three thirty-two left to go. It has just not been the been the half for Tippy Valley, McCartney. No, not at all. But we need to move down the field, get something, at least a field goal, because I do believe we get ball at half or after the half. Yeah, we get the ball at half, as the field goal is good. We'll be right back on RTC TV4 in the IHSAA Champions Network. And we're back on RTC TV4 in the IHSAA Champions Network. Andrew Thompson, Lowell McCartney, right, 332 left to go here in the first half. And halftime, they will reveal the homecoming king and queen for Tippy Valley High School. As Foster is setting off to kick it off here to Valley. So, so CMA about to kick it off here. I believe both teams are ready. And they're going to kick it off. And he's going to... Wes Parker's going to be able to get it. He's going to get through. Get, and that was a very solid return. And I think it's also going to be a flag on CMA. You might be right there, Drew. I don't know what they would call. I couldn't tell from my angle here. I think it's a late hit on CMA. Uh, that was an excellent return there by Wes Parker. And uh, we're used to seeing another Parker, Nate Parker, go off in uh, the return and the rushing game. But uh, for the return game, it's been Wes Parker tonight. Wes Parker has been very good on a return game. Oh. And it's going to be face mask on Valley. I have I, I don't think I've ever seen face mask on offense, let alone high school, college, or the NFL. Not even Pee Wee. I don't know if I did. That's, you can't get a face mask if you're a returner. That's just a stiff arm. Right. Unless I, you I grabbed the mask and threw him down, but. I couldn't see it, but I've never seen that before. Yeah, I've never seen it either. And that makes that excellent return not so great. 
First and 10 at the 40 for Tippy Valley. 324 left to go. Durkis in motion here. And he's going to hand it off over to Nate Parker. He's got room. Nate Parker is going to get, get another touchdown for Tippy Valley. And Valley needed a response, and they got one from Nate Parker. I'm going to go ahead and bite my tongue here. I think Nate Parker heard Nate me Parker say that uh, he hasn't been going off as much as we're used to, but uh, definitely wrong there as he was able to get an excellent touchdown there for Valley. Excellent touchdown for Timmy Valley. Exactly what Valley needed, and this has been a close game here. Valley's first close game here of the season, and they're going to be challenged mentally. And I think it's going to be a good game for the rest of the game, McCartney. Definitely. I mean, these close battles are fun to watch. I mean, you know, blowouts are also fun to watch. But it, I just feel like it's a lot more, it's a better experience when the games are neck and neck and you just don't know who's going to win. That's what makes football fun, in my opinion. Overby's extra point was good. And like you said, that was, it's very fun here in the first half. Definitely a great game here in the first half between the uh, Culver Academy and Tippy Valley. And with 3.15 left in the half, Valley is going to be set to kick it off to CMA. <laughs> CMA and Tippy Valley has not played since 2020. And the last score was CMA 16 to nothing in 2020. It's definitely a lot more closer than it was the last game, I tell you. You're absolutely right, Drew. I mean, this game has just been one touchdown to one touchdown to stop to stop to touch. To, it's mainly been defensive stops here, but then there's always that one big play after every few drives. And you're absolutely right, McCartney, about that. 3.15 left to go in the first half. Overby kicking off. And he's able to just get there. And oh, is he going to get it? Yes, he will. That was a beautiful kick from Overby. And oh, and CMA will not get excellent field position here. Beautiful kick from Gage Overby. And I believe that was Ty Rodriguez. And I believe he thought that was going to go into the end zone for a touchback. Uh, uh, yeah. Just a little... Solid kick there, and again, he thought, oh, it's going to be the touchback. No, nope, it's at the one-yard line. Now you got to scramble to get the ball. And, I mean, he was able to get about 13 on the return, but he just wasn't ready for it. He, it if you're a returner, you you hate that the ball might touch back, and then, oh, no, it's at the one. Now you got to recover. You I mean, hate that if you're you, a returner, I bet. You absolutely hate that feeling because, you know, I bet he felt confident that was going to the in, in the end zone, and then it just stopped down at the one. First and 10 of the 14 for CMA. Back. He's going to throw. It's going to be complete. And it's going to bring up a second down. And that was a solid throw there. And I'll bring up. They got a second down for CMA. That was a low pass there from McCoolgan. But it was able to be brought in for pickup of seven yards. Makes it second and three. So second and three for a, tip, for a CMA. Empty backfield here. Second and three, back to throw. And he's going to look and it is incomplete. And he was looking for Sullivan on the play. Just got a little extra muster. And and I think the quarterback's glad he got a little extra much there because there was two Valley defenders waiting for that football. Yeah, there was Wade Jones and Nate Parker there. And I think that could have been picked off, but Parker and Jones almost ran into each other. So they kind of had to stop in their tracks there. And that let that ball fall to the ground. Now as CMA has once again that single back. Yeah, they like that short. single back, McCartney. Third is free, 230 left to go in the first half. Ball at the 21, back to pass. He's going to look, a screen there. I believe that's Sullivan, and I believe it's going to be just enough maybe for that first down. Very solid play there, McCartney. He just got enough for that first down. Now we have 
two and two minutes, eight seconds left in this half. Let's see if Valley can get a stop here and potentially move the ball forward. Two two oh five left to go in the first half. He's gonna look back to pass. He's gonna throw a complete. Almost like check that an incomplete there. Landon almost Dirk is able to tip that ball out of bounds. Now bring up second and ten at the twenty six for CMA. Just under two minutes left to go. And again, like you said, almost intercepted by Landon Durkis. Uh, he just wasn't in the right position there, but it was a good enough play. He was able to tip it out. Wonder if they might do a handoff here. It's been throws all drive. Second and 10 here for CMA. Back to pass. He's going to look complete. No, bat it down. Almost in the hands of, West of number, number 13. Aiden Fro, it looked like it was going to be complete, but just able to get there at the last second. West Parker able to get there right in the nick of time just to tip that ball down. And that's what you want to see when you're a defense here. So third and 10, 154 left to go here. Here in this first half. Game tied at 21. Back to pass goes step up, step up. McCougal. He's got to look. He's got to to run. Is he going to get there? Yes, he will. First down, CMA. And Durf just on the stop. And now we'll bring up a first, bring up a first down for CMA. What a great run from McColgan for CMA. So first and 10 at the 42. And again, McCartney, that single back again. They love to run that play. Play back to pass goes by Colgan. He's going to look, and it's going to be incomplete. Bounced off the knee pad of Nate Parker. That will bring up second down for CMA. So first and 10 here for Check that second down and 10 here for CMA. He's still in the first half. Quarterback for uh, CMA has been very solid, McCartney. See if he can continue this drive. Yeah, I mean, he's just been shredding up Valley's defense here. For the last few plays, I mean, there's been some tip balls and almost interceptions. But when he needs to, he's able to get through the line and find an He's got to look. He's got to evade pressure. And it's complete. Great throw there for McColgan. Evading pressure. Now bring up another first down for, for CMA. And you saw Valley's pressure there. And McColgan was just able to evade the pressure. A minute and a half left in this first half. And let's see what goes on within this last minute and a half. So first and ten. Uh, pressure, it's going to be a long throw, and it's going to be incomplete. It was intended for Eden throw. Bring up second down. Wes Parker on the coverage there. And, it was, and McGolgan was just able to miss his target there. We've got a Sylvan Hillen up here looking for his grandparents. Again, a Sylvan Hillen looking for his grandma and grandpa. Just your grandpa, my best. It's fine. We got one of these. So second and ten here for for CMA. Yes, yes. And he's gonna look, look the throw, and he's able to knock him down. McColgan sacked, and that will bring up a third and long for CMA. McGriff, McGriff on the sack. That will be third and long for CMA. And with 50 seconds left, that's an, that is exactly the play that Valley's wrecking crew wants there. <clears throat> Once again, their favorite <laughs> formation of the game, the single back. Third and 13 here. Big, big fur down play here. He's able to get there. He's going to run. He's going to throw, and it is 
is intercepted, and I believe it might be out of bounds. I think it's out of bounds. Referee talk. And it's incomplete. Fourth and 13. What an absolute amazing play there by Nate Parker. From my perspective, I thought he was in bounds, but either way, a great defensive It didn't stop. look, you couldn't really tell from the camera angle there, but but nonetheless, 4th and 13 here for, tip, for CMA. 34 seconds left as their punt unit is out to punt it back, and I wonder if uh, Nate Parker is going to be able to return it or if it's just going to be a touchback here. So, Culver again about to punt it away here. And here's the punt, and it will be a low, low punt, and he was able to get it through a couple tacklers, and it won't get much. That'll bring a first down for Tippy Valley. Nate Parker able to break a few tackles there. But they've got to go all the way down the field. They're starting off at the 19-yard line. Do you think they attempt a long pass here? I mean, they definitely could, but I think, if anything, they'll just want to go into half with a tie here. So they might just try a few run plays as I'm going to not talk anymore because Cody Eastgate is in an empty backfield formation. Empty backfield for Eastgate. And here is... He's going to get the screen. That's going to be over to Nate Parker. Nate Parker will be some tacklers. He's going to get through. Another tackler. Pass the 40 to the 50. Nate Parker. Oh, are you kidding me? Nate Parker, check the speed limit for Nate Parker. He is really fast. Touchdown, Tippy Valley. No flags on the field. Nate Parker is probably one of the best young players I think I've ever seen play high school That was football. a screen pass. Solid running from Parker. 27-21. He was able to break through. Not break. I don't know. That was a bunch of tack. Missed defenders there. I'm at a loss for words here. I am too. 12 seconds left to go. And PAT is up and it is good. 28-21. Tepe Valley over CMA. And I'm going to be honest with you. That play reminded me of one, I believe, the first preseason game for the Chicago Bears when D DJ Moore, DJ, DJ Moore, Moore, Justin Fields threw it behind the uh, line of scrimmage, and DJ Moore took it all the way down the field for a touchdown. That was like a similar play, similar screen play there. I don't believe they, they could have. They could have used that against the Packers, you know. <laughs> the Packers still own the Bears, even without Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, yeah. Keep quiet. All right, we have Bears fans watching. Okay. I know. We have Bears fans. They don't need to hear this right now. They're going they, through pain. They also have they, we they're also watching have, Tippy Valley football. They need happiness. We okay? also have Packers fans watching. And your point is? <laughs> I said one of the returners was Devin Hester last time. There's a bear for you. <laughs> so Overby's going to kick it off here. 28-21, Tippy Valley. And kickoff here, not a great kickoff here, and I think it's going to get out of bounds. I think that's going to be a free kick out of bounds. No, so Overby's kick is out of bounds. I don't think they're going to call the free kick out of bounds. Twelve seconds left. Do you think CMA is going to do some more pass plays? Yeah, they're going to do some more passing plays, especially after what Valley did. They're wanting to uh, see what they'll do here on first and ten at the forty-four. CMA trailing by a touchdown here. Two receivers at the top of your receiver, at the top of your screen. Excuse me. Colgan looking for the looking for the snap. It's gonna look it. It's gonna be complete over the throw. And he was able to just get out of bounds here. That will bring up second down for the Eagles. Yeah, 
No, they say he got enough for the first, I believe. Oh, really? Yeah, he was close there. That's definitely second and now they will give it a first down here for CMA. There was a little bit of confusion there. Eight seconds left to go here in the first half. Unless it's a quick pass here, possibly last play of the half. And back to pass. He's got a throw and it is incomplete. Drop from Fro. Six seconds left in the first half. And that was intended for Aiden Fro. And that was a good pass there by McColgan, but Fro just not able to reel it in there with six seconds left. So six seconds left. Second down and 10. Golgan again looking for the snap. See if this is the last play of the half. Back to pass. He's got a throw. A short pass over to Aiden Fro. Completed out of bounds. You think they're going to set up for a field goal here? I'm not sure. I mean... We'll see what happens here. And that's a number first down for CMA. And they've got three seconds here. And if I were CMA with three seconds left, I would at least attempt a field goal. But this is a long field goal. So I do understand what they're doing. But it just seems kind of odd to me. So three seconds left to go here in the first half. Vikings out by seven. And he's going to look. He's going to get sacked. To end the first half, Dalton Elber able to sack it for the last play of the half, and that's how you want to end the half as a Tippecanoe Valley Viking. Tippy Valley up 28 21 over Culver, and it is halftime here. We'll be right back at RTC TV 4 and the IHSA Champions Network. So, Valley does get the ball geared to start the second half. And it looks like both teams are ready to kick it off. And we will get set up here to start off the second half for CMA and Tippy Valley. And kick is up. And here we go to start off the second half. Here's the return. Pass to the 30, now to the 35, now down to around the close to the 40. I think he does get past the 40. And that will start off. On the return. That was a start of the second half. That was a low kick there by their uh, kicker, and Colton Crabb was able to get it and run for a few extra yards there. We haven't seen much of Colton Crabb here this season. It's good to see him no, get a kick not. return. I believe, if I can find Colton Crabb on the roster sheet, he is. Colton Crabb is a junior, so hopefully next year when uh, the seniors are gone, he can uh, make it to that starting roster. So here we go, 11.51 left to go. Eastgate under center. Is able to hand the ball off here over to Brock Durf. Not going to get much. And it will break up second down here for Tippy Valley. And a quick stop there by CMA. Not able to get much there for Brock Durf. Pick up about two yards, I believe. Yeah. Was able to pick up one. It looked like two yards there, McCartney. That's what it looks like from the marker, but I could just be going insane. So second and nine here, down at the 44. And Eastgate again in her center here. He's going to pitch it off over to Nate Parker. He's going to give crew a few tackles here. He's able to pick up the first down past midfield. Solid. I'll have run there from Nate Parker, evading tacklers. No, they're going to say it's a third down and short. Oh, they, they are going to have it a third down and short. I was close. I believe the upper half of Nate Parker crossed that first down marker, but the, the ball did not break that plane for no. it to count as a first hey, that, down. That was close, though. That was close. So third and one at the 48-yard line here. 10.50 left to go in the third quarter. 28-21. And he's going to hand it off over to Nate Parker. He's going to have a first down and more. Nate Parker 
continuing to run, and he's going to get out of bounds, fumbling, but he was out of bounds, and I'll bring up another Friday first down. What a run there by Nate Parker. Just an excellent, excellent run there. Yes, another excellent run there from Nate Parker, getting all the way down to the 18. So 10.36 left to go here in, the, here in the third quarter. Valley just able to get out of the huddle. Johnson in motion here. Yeah, and there's Johnson again. Like you, McCartney said, in motion. Another man in motion. He's going to hand it all over to Nate Parker. Get a few yards there. And I'm going to bring up a second down for Tippy Valley. I thought they were going to fool them there, but... Uh, we had Tyler Johnson go in motion, and then Trent Marshall. I thought it was going to go to Marshall, but it went to Nate Parker, and he was only going to get about three yards on the carry. <laughs> and now Johnson will come out of the game. 10.05 left to go here in the third quarter. Ten seconds left on the play clock here. Yeah, they got to get the ball off here. And he's going to he's gonna throw it, and it's going to be tipped. And it's incomplete. That was almost intercepted there. That was, McCartney, what'd you say? That was not his best throw there? I said that was almost intercepted there. Yeah, it was, it was almost intercepted. Not the greatest pass for Cody Eastgate there. Uh, I believe he was hit as he released it, or it was tipped or something. Because that's not a type of throw you you see from Cody Eastgate. He's not Def throwing ducks out there. No, definitely not. Me? So third and seven here for Tippy Valley, and a pitch over to Nate Parker. Saw that blocking for Nate Parker. He's still on his feet, and that's another Valley touchdown for Nate, Nate Parker. Oh my gosh! Broken tacklers. Good blocking, and Parker has another touchdown. I believe that's his third, am I correct? His third of the night. Nate Parker touchdown! almost fell down on that play, and that could have not been a touchdown, but this is the Nate Parker we expect to see almost every single game and every single play. What a run. Absolutely. And here is the kick, and it is perfect. Right down the middle, and we will be right back from RTC TV4 and the IHSAA Champions Network. And we're back on RTC TV4 and the IHSAA Champions Network. 35-21, Tippy Valley. And that was an effective drive from Tippy Valley to, to start off the, the second half. And Valley here getting ready to uh, kick the ball off here. And Overby here is going kick to kick it to the next state. <laughs> I don't want to hear you say it again, McCartney. <laughs> <laughs> and the kick is up. And here's the return from Culver. Able to get through here. That was Sullivan on the return. Solid tackle there from Valley. I believe and he takes it to the 22 or 23 yard line. First and 10 here for the CMA Eagles. What do you think uh, could spark their offense going on to their first drive of the second half? Well, they definitely need a, a big first down here. And again, you know, here you, you're faced with adversity here. You're down two scores. You got to. You got to figure something out here on offense. Definitely. First and down. First down and ten at the twenty-three yard line here. The running back going in motion to the other side, and he's gonna throw it in incomplete. And that was a low snap and a quick pass there, right past Wade Jones, who if he just had better positioning, he could have picked that off. We've seen a lot of those throws tonight, Drew, where. Valley just needs to be a foot over, and they could have had five interceptions on this game. Absolutely. Incomplete pass brings up second down and 10 for and the Eagles. CMA just coming out of the huddle here, second down and 10. A couple of receivers at the top of your screen here. 
Running back going to the other side again. Uh -oh. Turn around, He's going to back go. to pass. He's going to throw it. Was Parker in coverage and it is incomplete. Looking for a throw. And I'll bring a third down for, for CMA. Once again, that was another low snap. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, it was a low snap and a bobble. And then Wes Parker had some great coverage there. Absolutely. That was good coverage here from uh, Wes Parker there. Had to make sure he turned his head around because maybe if not, maybe that would have been a pass interference, and you don't want that. No, McCartney. you don't want a pass interference call at all. So third and ten at the 23-yard line here. Single back formation for the Eagles. Shotgun McColgan and shotgun. Colgan and the shotgun. Uh -oh. And here's back to pass. He's gonna look. He's gonna run. He's gonna slide, and he's gonna be short of that first down marker. I believe the yeah, way it works short. is where you start the slide, not where you finish the slide. Uh, right. So that's going to bring a fourth and two here for Culver Academy. And they're going to punt it. Watch for a fake punt here, McCartney. And watch for, uh, they're going to try and possibly get <laughs> Valley to go off sides or get, oh, never mind. And oh, it's a fake. Here, here's yeah! a fake. Here's a fake. And it's. Valley's going to sniff it out. Valley made the stop, and there's a flag on the play. Cody Black on the stop. Short of the first down. It's going to be on Valley. It's going to be penalty after the play. I think the refs are going to talk about it here. I wasn't able to see what happened. What uh, What's the call on the field, Drew? I think it's a late hit, I think. Well, that penalty marker doesn't matter as Cody Eastgate and the Tippecanoe Valley Vikings offense march yeah. out of the field. Yep. yep. So first down for Valley. And Valley has excellent field position starting off this drive at the 44-yard line. Valley got to shake off the penalty here, 35-21. Eastgate. Eastgate under center here. It's going to fake it. It's going to throw it, and it's going to be incomplete. Just that, was, that was a solid pass there. It's just... But it's going to bring up second now. That was a solid pass. Just a little behind Trent Marshall there. Trent Marshall was in double coverage, so perhaps a risky throw. But <coughs> uh, in the end, not a terrible decision. As Brandon Styles and Landon Dirk has come onto the field. So second down and ten here for, for the Tippy Valley Vikings. And Cody Eastgate steps out of the game. Uh, Nate Parker, they like to do this a lot. They like to have Nate Parker come in as a quarterback here. Maybe they're going to run some Wildcat offense here, McCartney. Second out and ten here for the Parker. And it is a Wildcat play here. And he's going to run and stumble, and he's close to that first down marker. He's going to be short, and it'll bring a third down here for Tippy Valley. I believe he's going to be two yards short there. And you don't see Wildcat very often anymore. Yeah, you don't see a lot of Wildcat much here in football, but Valley coming out with the Wildcat here on that first down, that second down play. I mean, in 2008, we saw the Miami Dolphins utilize the that, Wildcat. That is a throwback. That is a throwback. Goodness. I do my research, Drew. So third down and two here. And he's going to run it. And as a number play for Nate Parker, is he gone? And he is in again. Touchdown, Tippy Valley. Valley runs the Wildcat again for the second time in a row, and it works off to perfection Man, for Nate me. Parker. What an excellent play call. Like I said, back in 2008, the Miami Dolphins utilized the Wildcat formation with Ronnie Brown and were able to well, blow out the New England Patriots in an unexpected game. Well, the only thing that mattered in the 2008 McCartney was that my team won the Super Bowl, so no nothing matters there except for my Steelers winning it. Just saying. Extra point is good. 
We'll be right back on RTC TV4 and the IHSA Champions Network. We'll be back as McCartney fights me about making that Steelers comment. We'll be back. And we're back on RTC TV4 and the IHSA Champions Network. Andrew Thompson along with McCartney, right? 42-21, Tippy Valley, and Valley has scored twice in a row to start off the second half. And it looks like Valley has kind of figured things out so far, McCartney. Definitely. We are... Not too far into the second half, and Valley scored two touchdowns. Er, Gage, yes, two touchdowns. <laughs> Gage Overby about to kick it up, and here we go. Another solid, solid kick again, and he's going to return it. He's going to run for it. Breaks through another tackler. He's going to run it. He is, might be gone, and it was just able to get there. A great return there from CMA. Parker able to, to stop him. And now CMA will take over first down and 10. West Parker out there looking like DK Metcalf trying to catch Buda Baker. <laughs> so first and 10 at the 19 yard line. 42 21 Tippy Valley. And that was a great kickoff return. And what CMA needed? Uh, I mean, yeah, that's exactly the spark they needed. But like I said, West Parker able to drag him down after uh, able to keep up with him. Otherwise, that, that was a touchdown saving tackle right there. Absolutely, indeed. First and 10 of the 19, 7.45 left to go. He's going to hand it off here over to Gig. And he's going to get more yardage, and that's going to bring up a first down. And that will be a first down for Culver. Carry was Edgar Braddon on the carry. They got to bring up first and goal for the Eagles. <laughs> first and goal here for McColgan. It's going to hand it off again, and there's not going to be much there from Edgar Braddon there on that carry this time, and that will bring up second and goal. For CMA. I mean, that was an excellent stop there by Valley. Able to read that it was going to be a handoff right up the middle and stop it before anything happened. So, second and goal here for CMA. Single back formation yet again. Yeah. They'll try it. Oh, no. oh. And he's going to get the snap. He's going to throw it. He's going to get knocked down immediately. Third and goal now for CMA. That was perfect defensive play there from Tippy Valley there. Landon Dirk is able to bust through that offensive line and get to Michael McColgan right away. What an excellent stop there from Landon Durkis. So third down here for CMA. If they don't get this on... On third down, do you think they go for it? Uh, definitely. They're down three scores with six minutes left in the third quarter. If they don't get it here, they're definitely going to go for it here. Third and goal for CMA. McColgan in the shotgun, empty backfield. Empty backfield for McColgan. Drop him back to pass. Man in motion. He's got to drop back to pass. He's got to look. He's got to try to run. He's got to run. And he's able to get there. He's got to get there. No, he's got to get there. Bumble. Is it Valley Ball? Yes! Valley Ball. Valley Ball. And a flag on the play, I think. Let's check the marker here. Let's check the penalty marker. And now it's big there. If this, if this, if this play stands, this is a huge play. Maybe he was throwing the penalty flag instead of trying to throw his marker. Well, I think it's picked up, McCartney. Yeah. Okay. So first and ten at the five yard line here that for wild, Tippy Valley. Wildcat formation once again. Nate Parker. Nate Parker here. He's gonna get the carry. He's gonna run for it. He's got to get more yardage here. That's going to be a first down and more. Nate Parker. 
He's going to get stopped near the 40. And that was a big play there immediately from Nate Parker. What an absolute insane carry there from Nate Parker. Wildcat formation seems to be working absolute wonders here for the Vikings. And uh, CMA just cannot stop the Wildcat formation. That was a 35-yard run here for Tippy Valley. So here we go, first down and 10. Again for Tippy Valley. Leave the lineup of the Wildcat yet again. And they're running it again. Parker away to receive the snap. He's going to run. He's going to get through. Oh, is that a trick play? Yes, it is. He's going to run. Is he gone? Yes, he is. And that's another touchdown for Tippy Valley. Wade Jones able to get the touchdown there after the trick play by Coach Weaver and Moriarty. And the second half has been disastrous for Culver Academy, but going beautifully for Tippy Valley. 100%. I thought once again Nate Parker was going to keep that. But yeah, I, I did too. I was going to say Nate Parker, but no, it was Wade Jones. Wade Jones. And here we go with the extra point. Kick is up, and it is perfect. We'll be right back at RTC TV4 and the IHSAA Champions Network. And we are back on RTC TV4 and the IHSAA Champions Network. 49-21 Tippy Valley. If Valley's defense holds on, uh, makes a stop on defense scores again, gets the extra point, they will be within five scores. And we'll go back to the running clock again. Again, if that happens. Once again, we might see the JV team come in. So here we go. It's a little squibber kick this time. And I believe this is going to go out of bounds. Yes, it is. And I believe they threw a penalty flag down. I saw some yellow hit, hit the field, but I think it's just going to be on the same spot. That's good. So here we go. First and ten for Culver Academy. Colgan in shotgun. Once again in the single back formation. So first and again first and ten for former Colgan. They got to see what they can do here on offense. It's going to throw it, just tipped off, almost intercepted there. That was an incomplete pass, and I'll bring up second down and ten. Looking like Deshaun Kaiser to Corey Coleman. Cody Black. <laughs> I, I won't stop with these NFL yeah, references. Yeah, you got to stop, McCartney. you got to stop. Second down and ten. That was a, eventually, you got to stop. Eventually, but that was a Browns reference, and it wasn't a good Browns reference. That was the year we went 0-16. Not a great year as a Browns fan. I thought you were a Giants fan. I like both. Goodness. First and ten for, check that, second and ten now for Culver Academy. And he's going to roll out to his left. He's going to throw it, and that was a beautiful pass there. That will bring up a first down for Culver Academy. Good sliding catch there by Aiden Fro. And Fro has been the main target for McColgan. So 4.50 left to go here in the third quarter. Or first and 10, 49-21. Running back right next to him again. He's going to throw it, and it is incomplete. I think that's just a miscommunication there from McColgan to throw, and that will bring up another second down. That was just a really quick pass there from McColgan. Had almost no time. He was looking for throw on that little hitch route. I think uh, I was just like way too fast for a throw to even catch on to that. I, I, he barely turned around by the time the ball got to him. Aiden Fro was rushed by, or not Aiden Fro, I'm sorry. Uh, McColgan was rushed by Kyler Johnson, so he had a tall 6'6 dude. And he's going to run it over to Aikbrocken. He's still on his feet, and he's going to run. 
And he will get that first down marker. And that's going to be a first down for Kyle Eggbrotten. Eggbrotten. I don't know why I rolled the R. So first and 10 at the 37-yard line. And he's going to get the throw, and it's going to be caught by Fro, and he's going to break a tackle there from Aiden Fro. He just was able to get it out of bounds there. Solid throw there from McGolgan, and solid route running there from Fro to pick up the first down. Yep, and that was a touchdown saving tackle there by Brock Durf, able to knock him out of bounds. Gain of 16 on that play. Four minutes left in this third quarter. So first and 10 here for... CMA. And here's a snap, hands the ball off again on for Agabrodden, and that's going to bring up another second down for CMA. So free, under 340 left to go here in the third quarter. Eagles coming out of the formation, out of the huddle, excuse me. Second and nine out of the 20-yard line here. And he's going to hand, well, now it's a throw, excuse me. He's going to throw it up, and it's going to be a first down for CMA. Aiden Cartmel able to get the quick pass there and take it upfield for a first down. Now CMA it's, down. It's, Sorry, Drew. <laughs> You're fine. Now it's going to bring first and goal here for CNA, CMA. McCartney, go ahead. Finish Down. what you were saying. <laughs> Down inside the 10. Remember, this is where they were last time. The ball was fumbled and recovered by Valley. So first and goal here for CMA. He's going to throw it. It's going to be complete for the touchdown for CMA. That was Foster, Foster Stockton. That will bring up be a touchdown Cover Academy. A high scoring game here, McCartney. 100%, 49-27. Pending the field or pending the PAT, could draw within 21. And here we go, the extra point. Good hold here, and that is good. So we'll be right back on RTC TV4 on the IHSAA Champions Network. And we are back on RTC TV4 and the IHSAA Champions Network. Andrew Thompson along with McCartney and Wright. 49-28, Tippy Valley. CMA able to get off their first touchdown of this second half. That was a very solid touchdown drive there, McCartney. Very solid drive from CMA, but... Is there enough time for them to potentially make a comeback here? I'm not sure. We'll see what happens here. Anything can happen here. In the state of Indiana. And the kick is off, and it's a low kick. He's got to get the ball here. He's got to get through. Was Parker again? Down to the 50. Past the 40. Down to the 30. The 25. Close to the 20. Great returner from West Parker. That was set up. First down for Tippy Valley. This is the best return night we've seen from Wes Parker. This Absolutely. Once again, like we're used to seeing Nate Parker on returns, but they've been kicking it low to Wes Parker's side. He's able to get past their defense and uh, always take it pretty far. Absolutely. You are right. So first and 10 at the 20. 21 here for, for Tippy Valley. And it looks like they're going to stick in the Wildcat formation. Oh, no. I'm wrong. So Eastgate and a quarterback. <laughs> I'm just so used to seeing Wildcat. Yeah, I am too. And he's going to hand it off over here to Grady Moriarty. Grady Moriarty is able to not get much. Now bring up second down for Tippy Valley. I saw Wade Jones and Nate Parker get out of the huddle. I'm like, they're doing Wildcat again. Yeah, it looked like it. <laughs> So second and seven for tip for the Tipkinu Valley Vikings. 
Brock Durf coming in for Grady Moriarty here. So second and seven now for Tippy Valley, 49-28. Eastgate again under center. He's going to toss it off over to Trent Marshall. Trent Marshall's going to get some yardage. He's going to get more yardage here. Is he going to get down to the... He's going to be just short down at the one-yard line there. That was close for a touchdown. Excellent carry from Trent Marshall there. Absolutely. But CMA able to stop one yard shy. What are you expecting here? Just, well, since you're doing NFL references, I might as well do it here. I might as well do, they might as well do that, that uh, push that the Eagles does with Jalen Hurt. Well, I mean, if <clears throat> it, it, you're at the one yard line. It just, it, you don't want to throw the ball on the one yard line. Okay, okay. I know what you're going to say. You don't need to mention that. You don't need to mention that play, Carney. He's going to hand it off over to Grady Moriarty, and he's going to be in again for another Valley touchdown. Grady Moriarty again for a Tippy Valley. That's another Valley touchdown. I do apologize, Drew, if I'm annoying you with all the NFL references. You kind of are. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'll stop for the night. Okay, good. I'll be back next week with more. <laughs> so 55-28, Tippy Valley. Kick is up, and it is perfect. We'll be right back again with another half. And we'll be right back on RTC TV4 at the IHSAA Champions League. And we are back here at Tippy New Valley. 56-28, and McCartney, it's a high-scoring game. Here at Smith Bibber Memorial Field. Definitely. I mean, we've seen Valley uh, put up some big numbers last week. I believe they put up 52, if I'm correct. Yeah, 53. 53. But uh, 56, that's a high scoring game here. 56 28. A minute 28 left in the third. And Overby's going to do a little squib kick again. And I see him able to just fall on it, and it'll take over first down. 15 receives the ball. Tommy Kelly. And Tommy Kelly able to fall on the ball there. Give him decent field position. First and 10 for the Eagles. Thank you very much. So here we go. First down and 10 at the 41 yard line here. He's going to throw it. It's going to be complete. It's going to be sh just short. No, no. Actually, yes, I think it's going to be almost close to that first down marker. Rory Sullivan on the catch. And it's going to be a yard short of that first down marker. So when it gets to this fourth quarter, McCartney, do you expect Valley to kind of Waste a lot of clock here. I expect them to waste a lot of clock, but not for them to take uh, their foot off the gas pedal. Maybe bring in their JV crew about halfway through the fourth if it gets a little more out of hand, but I'm still expecting them to go pedal to the metal. And here we go. He's going to get through number sack. He's going to get there, and yes, sacked. And that is McGriff on a sack. I will bring a fur down. For the Eagles. And as soon as that ball got to his hands, he stumbled backwards. And Asher McGriff was able to slam him down to the ground. That was a six-yard loss on the play. Which will bring a burn out here for CMA. And they're just going to take it to the sidelines. And we'll be back. And we are back on RTC TV 4 in the IHSA Champions Network. Andrew Thompson again along with McCartney right again. 56-28, Tippy Valley. Fourth quarter, and if Valley gets a stop, do you expect Valley to kind of, you know, waste a little more time here in the fourth quarter? Uh, like, like you said um, uh, before the third quarter ended, I do expect them to um, kind of waste some clock, try and get some quick and easy first downs. But, uh, you know, 
you never know what to expect when it comes to a Valley game. Well, you're definitely right about that part, McCartney. Definitely right. Looks like you're just, you know, maybe tying up your shoes here. So, fur down an A here for CMA. He's going to look to throw. He's got some time, and he's going to throw it, and it's going to be incomplete. That was intended for Rory Sullivan. And Sullivan was looking for a pass interference call, but I think that was just great defense there. That was great defense there. Which will bring up fourth and A. Now, if, if you're Coach Moriarty, and again, you, you, know the, you, you know the mercy rule here. You just st score another touchdown to you know, get everybody home? I mean, you definitely could, but... It all just depends on if CMA allows that to happen. And here's the punt, and it is away. And it's going to get a solid bounce for a Tippy Valley, and that's going to be down at the 37. And that's going to start up a first and 10 for Tippy Valley. So first and ten for first and ten for Tippy Valley. He's going to get in a quarterback here. No JV players in yet. He's going to get the handoff over to Styles. I'll bring up a second down here for Tippy Valley. Styles was able to pick up three there. Pretty solid run there. There by Styles. And Styles, he's looking like he has been improving his run game and his receiving game. Definitely. As more of a jumbo set here. And he's going to hand the ball off here to Styles. He's going to get a short gain again, which will bring up third down. And you can see Coach Moriari is going conservative here in the fourth quarter. Which is a good thing to go conservative here, as we do have a running clock. So I don't absolutely hate the decision here. You just, I think Moriarty wants to get at least one more first down here. Right. And here we go, fur down and five. He's gonna throw it. It's knocked down. Great, knocked down from the from the defensive lineman, and that'll bring up fourth down for Tippy Val. And they're gonna bring out the punt team here for Tippy Canoe Valley. So fourth down, and Valley's gonna punt it off here. And here's Jones with a punt, and that is a beauty, beauty punter. And Wyatt Hart's going to knock him down. And there's a little shup after the play. Take it down by Wyatt Hart and Isaac Ramsey. And knocked down by number 63, Ike Ramsey. Isaac Ramsey on that tackle there. And you haven't seen Isaac Ramsey all that much this season, haven't you? I uh, haven't heard much of Isaac Ramsey, but uh, good tackle there. So first and ten for CMA. Down to the 16-yard line. Three out wide on the top of your screen. He's going to throw a complete over. He's going to bring up his second down. So that was over to Foster Stockton, the junior. Oh, we can bring up another second down for CMA. And there's an injured player on Valley's sideline. Uh oh, that is not good. Injured CMA Eagle. 
And we're and due to that, we will take a short break. We'll be right back on RTC TV 4 the IGSA Champions Network. And we're back on RTC TV 4 the IGSA Champions Network. And it looks like Stockton was able to get up and get some help to the sidelines. Hopefully, he is okay, McCartney. Hopefully, nothing too serious for him. You never want to see anybody get injured. No, definitely not. You never want to see any sort of injury on anybody. You know, you never want, really want to see it at all. No, I mean, you don't want to see an injury in any sport, but football, they can be the most, in my opinion, football injuries can be the most dangerous. Absolutely, and I, you're, you're, not, you're not absolutely wrong about that either, McCartney. Second out and free, just under 10 minutes left to go here in the fourth quarter. And he's going to throw it. It's going to be incomplete. And that was Bobby Burke, I believe, on the coverage. Bobby Burke laying the wood there. And once again, that yes. was a low snap. I don't know if there's a little miscommunication, but once again, that was a low snap by their center. And now it's third down and three with 9.51 left in the game. So third and three. He's going to throw complete. And he was able to just get a complete for our first down. And that was a good tackle there from Styles, but fortunately just able to get that first down marker. Huh? <laughs> so first down and 10 at the 29. For the Eagles. 56 28. No. Oh. And it's going to be thrown. It's going to be complete. Just enough, I believe, in that first down marker. That's going to be Aiden Fro on the reception. Trent Marshall almost able to pick that off, but he jumped a little too early, or perhaps a little too late. That was just a really good throw there from, Mc, from McColgan. So 56, 56, 28, and he's going to hand the ball off here, get a few yards there. Ekbron on the carry, and I was Durf again on that carry, on the tackle, excuse me, and I'll bring up second down and six here for the Eagles. We've been hearing a lot of Brock Durf's name tonight, able to make some pretty critical tackles here. And the late going and early going of the game. And he's going to throw it, and I believe that's just incomplete there. That was intended for Aiden Fro, McCulkin's favorite target of the night. Now bring up third down at six here for the Eagles. 8.09 left to go. <laughs> and 8.09 left to go here. And fix the handoff. He's going to throw a complete. And that'll be another first down for CMA. That was Polo. That Actually, was check Ty Rakan or Ty Rakan. Ty Rakan. And that's another CMA Eagles first down. But is it too little, too late for them to be going down the field? Well, we'll have to see here. Just a little over 7.50 left to go here. Three receivers down at the bottom of your screen. First down and 10. He's going to throw it. He's going to throw it. And it is it. Is that intercepted? No way. It is an interception. Owen Omondi with the interception. Owen Omondi. Playing a little bit of the tip drill there. What an interception from Owen Omondi. And any hope the Eagles had there has just been slivered away there. Oh, my. What an interception there. As we see 
that uh, some of the JV men are coming yep. out onto the field. Uh, uh, there's Hunter Stage. Now, I like this kid. I like this kid, Hunter Stage. I think he's going to be something for Valley here in the next couple of years. I like this kid a lot. We haven't seen too much of him in the last couple of games, but from what I've seen, he's a pretty quick. In the, as he's going to... Oh. And he's going to hit the... Carey, he's not going to get much. He's going to get stuffed back. Bring up a second down here for Tippy Valley. May be able to pick up a yard there, but a pretty brutal tackle there on Hunter Stage. Mind you, he's only 5'9", 141 pounds, and he had two defenders on him. So, you know, that didn't feel very good for him. Absolutely. So, second and nine here for Tippy Valley. He skated again under center. And he's going to look. He's going to run for it. And that is... As Styles, I believe, on the carry, and that will bring up Styles, close to that first down. And he, Styles was taken down by free safety Stephen Gray, the junior. And that is another first down. And this is exactly what you expect from Valley. They're just going to try and kill some clock here, have a little bit of fun towards the end of the game. So 6.35 left to go here. Hands the ball off, and it's not going to be much. Going to stuff right behind the line of scrimmage if he got any yardage. And that will bring up a second down here for Tippy Valley. I believe Styles lost three there. Styles got the handoff, bounced to the outside, but was immediately met by CMA defenders for a four-yard loss. That is not what, I mean... I mean, Game's out of hand, but you still don't want to lose those extra yards, McCartney. No, they didn't draw that one up on the <laughs> on the uh, on the whiteboard. Six minutes left to go here in the fourth quarter. Eastgate is gonna and he's gonna play fake again, and it's gonna go over to Nate Inkstrand. That's the fifty, and he's gonna get down to around a thirty-five yard line here. And that will be a first down for Tippy Valley. And that was a beautiful play fake there from Cody Eastgate and an even more amazing catch from Nate Ingstrand for a huge gain and another Vikings first down. Yeah, that was unexpected there, McCartney. You figure you see a little more run play. Still passing here. And that's just, that was just a great catch by Nate Engstrand, a name we haven't heard much this season. So first and ten here at the 35-yard line here, hands the ball off. That's over to West Parker. West Parker gets through. I believe he might get close to that first down marker. A penalty flag on the field. A penalty flag. Could this be an offsides call here? And it could be a hold on the Vikings here. That's a hold on the Vikings. And it is a hold on the Vikings. Making it a second down and 18 with 516 left in the game. Think they're going to go with another handoff here, Drew, or potentially another yeah, Probably throw. just another handoff here. You have the game right in your, right in your favor. Wouldn't risk anything, McCartney. Eastgate again under center, and he's going to pitch the ball up over to Grady Moriarty here. He's going to get a few yards there. Won't get much. Maybe one or two yards there, but not a not a play you really want. That was a two-yard gain here, which will bring up second and 16. Just under five minutes now. And we talked about this McCartney Valley. She's going to waste the clock here to send everybody home here as quickly as possible. Definitely. There's 4.35 left in this game. And he's going to hand it off here. Goes over to Wyatt Hart here. Wyatt Hart is going to get a few yards here. He's able to just get close to that first down marker. That's Bring a four third down. For Tippy Valley. That's a great carry there by Wyatt Hart. He was, I believe, just three yards shy of picking up that first down there. 
13 yards. And now you got now you got third down and just manageable now. And Wade Jones comes into the game. Coming in for Eric Burke. So fur down and three. And he's going to hand it off over to Brandon Stiles. And again, another carry there from Brandon Stiles. I think that's just going to be enough for that first down marker. Brandon Stiles with a pretty powerful run there, enough to pick up the first. And Hunter Stage comes in for Cody Eastgate, and Eric Burke comes in for Wade Jones. Yeah, now they're just going to now they're gonna bring more of that JV roster again. First and 10 at the 22-yard line, 320 left to go in the fourth quarter. Oh. And it's going to run over for Hunter Stage. It's going to run for it. Hunter Stage has the moves. Which will bring a first and goal for Tippy Valley. Great run there by Hunter Stage. Yeah, I was about to say, Hunter Stage, solid run there. And inside the 10 with three minutes left in the game. Do you think Valley's going to try and attempt another score here, or do you think they're just going to keep letting the clock drain? Maybe, maybe we'll see. We'll we will we'll see here. And Ingstrand's gonna get the carry here. It's gonna get a get a, a couple yards. And two thirty five left to go in the fourth quarter. And Ingstrand able to pick up two yards, making it a second second and goal from the seven yard line. And we've got White Hart coming in for Nate Ingstrand. You think a potential White Hart carry here? I would love to see a White Hart carry. I tell you, I would love to see one. And unless he goes in motion, I don't know. I mean, he's in motion. Hart in motion. Gonna toss it over to White Hart. And forget about what I said there, McCartney. <laughs> That never happened. <laughs> that, same from what I said, never happened. And that will bring up third down for Tippy Val. And he lost seven yards on that carry. Ingstrand coming back in for Wyatt Hart. And they are either going to, they might just do another run, and then they might just bring in Gage Overby if they can't get the first down or the touchdown here. Well, maybe they'll go for it again, you know, waste more clock here. We'll see. It's gonna get. It's gonna throw it, and that's not not gonna be much. Hunter Stage, I like the kid, but just not able to get through the sacks. No, to I bring mean, a fourth down. CMA able to get through uh, the offensive line, and I believe they're gonna bring out Gage Overby. Yes, they will bring out Overby. So we'll have to bring out Gage Overby. <laughs> What is it? 35 yard field goal. 34, 35. Gage Overby into attempt. 35. Yeah, this will be a 34, 35 yard field goal here from Gage Overby. And does he have enough? And he does. Field goal made. 59 28. And that about. Shuts the door on this game for this game. And we'll be right back on RTC TV4 and the IHSAA Champions <laughs> Network. And we are back on RTC TV4 and the IHSAA Champions Network. It's your Thompson Aloma McCartney right. 34 seconds left till this game's over. And Valley has this game won to say the very least. Kickoff here. Be another short kick. And knocks him down. I was Smith. On the tackle. And that will bring up first down and 10 for CMA. Just under 30 seconds left to go. Smith. 29 seconds left in the game. CMA Eagles football here. What do you expect them to do? Just 
Wow, I'm run. not expecting much. Again, this game is over here. 59 28. So first down and 10 here for 40 Eagles here, 29 seconds left. Valley will play the Jimtown Chimneys the next next week. And we will cover that here for RTC TV4 on the IHSA Champions Network. Pass is complete. And I don't think CMA is going to run out of her play here. Bobby Burke on the coverage. That was Burke on the coverage there. Oh, they're going to try and run one more play here. They're going to try to run one more play here. And they're not going to they're not going to run the pl play here. He gets stuffed anyways. Incomplete. Valley makes a statement in the second half. Final score, Tibby Valley 59, CMA 28. And that will be the end of the ball game here. Along with McCartney Wright, I'm Andrew Thompson signing up from RTC TV4 and the IHSA Champions Network. Yeah.